Welcome, everyone. This is your online pre-calculus course uh, presented by me, uh, Mr. Dangora. Uh, in this course, we'll attempt to cover everything that we would have covered in class uh, for each section. Uh, and to start, we're going to do section 4.1, angles and radian measures. So in this section, we're going to start very simply and use the vocabulary of angles. We'll talk about degrees uh, and how to split them up into smaller units like degrees, minutes, and seconds. Then we'll talk about radians and what they mean and go between them. Then we'll start drawing angles in standard position, find coterminal angles, find the length of a circular arc, and finish up with linear and angular speed uh, on a circular path. So let's start with the some basics from geometry. Okay, so let's think about angles. Uh, and the way we're going to start to think about angles is by thinking about a clock. So the hour hand on a clock suggests a ray. An array is a part of a line that has only one endpoint. So we have one endpoint, and it goes forever in the opposite direction, away from the endpoint. And an angle is what you get when you have two rays that have a common endpoint. So like we have these hands of the clock there, both of them represent rays, both of them are shooting out away from the midpoint, and the space in between them uh, represents an angle. Now, what we're going to do a little bit differently in trigonometry than what we've done in out in a in geometry is that all of our angles are going to have some sort of direction. That means they're going to go from one spot to another spot. Where the angle starts is called my initial side, and the other side is called my terminal side. Initial side where it starts, terminal side where it stops. So a, ray, a rotating ray is awful, is often a useful way to think about angles, right? So as we go from the first point to the second ray, from the first ray to the second ray. Uh, in the figure that we were just looking at, the ray rotates from 12 to 2. The ray pointing to 12 is the initial side, the ray pointing to 2 is the terminal side, and my endpoints right there in the middle is called the vertex of the angle. Okay, so in this next figure, this shows an angle. The arrow near the vertex shows the direction and the amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side. So as we go from the initial side, the blue one, to the terminal side, the red one, we can see that my angle opens from the blue side to the red side. Uh, most commonly, we name angles with lowercase Greek letters like alpha, beta, gamma, and most commonly, theta. Okay. So unlike naming the angle like ABC, like angle ABC, like you would in geometry, right? we're going to stick with uh, angles that we can name with just one variable. We often talk about angles in standard position. Okay, So an angle is in standard position if two things happen. If its vertex is on the origin, of a regular coordinate system, and its initial side is on the positive x-axis. So we would want our vertex there, and the initial side on my positive x-axis, and then the other side wherever it is I want. Right? And these angles are going to open from the initial side to finish on the terminal side. When we see an initial side and terminal side in place. There are two kinds of rotations that could have generated the angle. So if we're starting at the blue line, okay, if we're always starting here, I could go this way, a counterclockwise direction, or starting here, I could go this way, a clockwise direction. Okay. When we look at the rotation, we don't say counterclockwise and clockwise, we assign this rotation a positive or a negative measurement. So positive angles are this figure, where we start at the initial side and we go this direction. We go the counterclockwise direction. A negative angle 
is when we start at the uh, initial position, the, the standard position, and we go this direction, right? We go counterclockwise. Uh, so in either one of these, right, we're going to say alpha is positive in the first, in, in part A, and that theta is negative in the part B. When you have an angle at standard position and its terminal size lies in a quadrant, we say the angle lies in that quadrant. So as long as you're starting there, as long as you're starting on the positive x-axis, we can say that this angle, angle A right here, lies in quadrant two. Remember the quadrants? Go one, two, three, four. And look at that. They go in a positive direction. Kind of makes sense. Okay. So depending on how big the angle is, right? And we're going to talk about ways to measure angles in a few minutes. Okay. But depending on how big the angle is, we can say which quadrant it would have finished in because I know that from there to there is 90 degrees all the way around is 180 270 and all the way around the circle is 360. Uh, that is one way to measure we'll talk about other another way to measure in a second okay so given that this angle is in standard position, determine the quadrant at which the angle lies. So if you have a 124 degree angle, right, it would be in quadrant two because, right, 90, 180. So it's halfway, somewhere in between 90 and 180, so we can figure out that it's in quadrant two. Okay, so do all the angles that are in standard position have to lie in a specific quadrant? And, of course, the answer to that is no, because the terminal side, where the angle finishes, could lie on the x-axis or on the y-axis. So beta, right here, you can see, finishes, starts there, finishes on the negative part of the y-axis, okay? This is called a quadrantal angle, okay? So quadrantal angles don't necessarily lie in a specific quadrant. They are actually on one of the axes. They're actually in between the two quadrants. Okay, so I briefly talked about a way to measure an angle using degrees. Okay, and I didn't really introduce that too much because it's kind of something that we're already familiar with, right? Degree measurement is how we talk about uh, angles and circles, okay? So <clears throat> when we talk about how to measure angles, right, we're determining the amount of rotation from some initial side to some terminal side. And my measure degree, right, we symbolize by a small raised circle, looks like that, right? And if you think of the hour and a hand of the clock, all the way around the clock from noon to midnight, the hour hand moves in a complete circle. And by definition, by rules that we that have, we have previously established, all the way around a circle is 360 degrees. Okay. Uh, using this as an amount of rotation, uh, one degree would be one 360th of a complete rotation. So you can sort of visualize that a little bit. Why 360? Well, you can see a few reasons right here. Um, the length of the year happens to be 365 days. So early mathematicians, when they were studying uh, circles and orbits and things like that, they realized that it's a nice, nice number to base uh, the year off. Didn't quite work out, right? But they couldn't really tell too much of that. They thought 360 and uh, came pretty close. Uh, the ancient Babylonians had a base 60 number system. We use a base 10. They happen to use a base 60. And probably the most useful reason for us is that 360 has a lot of factors. So let's see. 1 and 360, right? Uh, 2 and 180, 3 and, whoops. 120, uh, 
four. Yeah, four goes into three sixty. Uh, five. Sure. Uh, six and sixty. Seven, unfortunately, is one of the few ones right there that doesn't go into three sixty, but eight does. Uh, nine. Ten. And we're still going. No, eleven doesn't work, but twelve does. Uh, thirteen, no. And that, no. Fifteen and twenty-four. And then I believe there's one more, and that's 18 and 20. Okay. So all of these pairs multiply up to 360. And that means that we can separate the circles that have 360 degrees. We can separate them into all these different number of equal pieces, which is going to be really useful for us later. Yeah, we can split it. A circle into three sections of 120 into into eight sections of 45, right? All of these I all of these property all these factors make 360 work really really well. Okay, it's kind of why circles don't have a base or, or a, a measurement of 100 degrees, right? 360 happened to work out better for all of these reasons. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about angles that have special names and this should be fairly some or fairly familiar from geometry or from just general knowledge uh if an angle is between zero and 90 it ha is called an acute angle a right angle is equal to 90 degrees which happens to be if we look at this a quarter of a rotation around a complete circle and yeah, that's pretty interesting okay we'll come back to that obtuse angle between zero and 90 degrees, or sorry, I mean, so between 90 and 180 degrees. And finally, a straight angle, which is actually halfway around a complete circle. Okay. So these, again, should be fairly familiar. Now, degrees is one way we can measure a lot of stuff, but as we get to bigger and bigger circles, we are going to need to cut degrees into different uh, decimals, different parts of a degree. So we have a few different things that we use to split degrees up. And we use the degree, minute, second notation. Okay, so one minute, which is written like that with one little tick mark is equal to is one it's one sixtieth of a degree. Right? One sixtieth of one degree. Okay, so that means there's sixty minutes in one degree. And one second, which is written like this with two little lines, okay, is equal to one sixtieth of a minute or one three hundred sixtieth of one degree okay so there's a there's a few little tricks here to changing this is called degree minute second notation when we have an angle that sort of looks like 31 degrees 42 minutes 51 seconds right that's different than just saying 31 point, you know, whatever, 787 degrees. Okay. While these two might be almost equal, uh, there are two different ways of writing the same thing. Degrees, minute, second notation, and degree and decimal notation. Let's go back and forth between the two. Okay, so to convert it to convert degrees and decimals to degrees, minutes, seconds, okay, we're going to follow this procedure. Okay, first we're going to take out the whole degrees because that's how many degrees we're going to have. 
and we're going to convert the fractions to minutes by using a conversion factor and that there are 60 minutes in one degree. Okay. Then the whole number of the answer is how many whole minutes I have. Then we're going to take the decimal that's left over and convert that again to seconds by using the fact that there are 60 seconds in one minute. Okay, and then we don't go any further than that. So if we get to something that's smaller than a complete uh, second, then we're just going to leave it as a decimal. Now right, let's see how this works. It's easier to see when we use a number. Okay, so we are going to have some amount of degrees, some amount of minutes, and some amount of seconds. Well, I can see, I know I already have 56 degrees. Okay, this is now the leftover. 0.735 degrees. I'm going to take that leftover and convert it to minutes. And I do that by just multiplying by 60. And I get 41 point, or sorry, 44.1. That means I have 44 whole minutes. And then I don't put 0.1, I take the leftover 0.1. And I do this again, because now this is 1.1 minute, and I multiply by 60 seconds in, whoops, in one minute in order to get the number of seconds. So this has, so basically I take the decimal part, 0.735, multiply by 60, take the decimal point, decimal part, 0.1, multiply by 60 again. And I get that this is 56 minutes, 56 degrees, 44 minutes, 6 seconds. One more. So this is 213 degrees. This part, multiply it by 60. Uh, let's use the units. All right, degrees cancel out, and I'm left with 60 times 0.875, which is 52.5. So that's 52 minutes. And then 0.5 times 60 is 30. 30 seconds. Okay. We can go backwards as well. So, for instance, I can now, instead of instead of uh, multiplying by 60 and multiplying by 60 again, I can take this and divide by 60 and then uh, divide what's left over by 60 again. Uh, or we could also realize that this is a fraction of a minute and this is a fraction of a, sorry, this is a fraction of a degree. This is a fraction of a degree as well. And the minutes are, there's 60 minutes in one degree, and there's 3,600 seconds in one degree. And we could just take both of those, divide them, and add them all together. So either way you want to do this, uh, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Let's try it. Okay. So what we're going to do is divide by 60. And then divide by 60 again. Okay. So we take the 28 seconds and we just say that there is one minute in 60 seconds and now we have turned the 28 minutes into or the 28 seconds into minutes and we get 0.46 okay then clap on that five right add it together because now we have 5.46 uh, minutes times one degree in 60 minutes. And so I just take, whoops, 5.46, divide out the 60, and I get 0 0.091. So that gives me 32.091 degrees. Now, 
there's some good news for this. Okay. Most calculators have a button that will do this for you. So you should find on your calculator a DMS button or a button that sort of looks like this with degrees, minutes, seconds, all on one button. Kind of looks like a bunch of commas put together or quotes or something like that, uh, but it is actually degrees, minutes, seconds. So for instance, if you were to type this in and press that button, you'd get a conversion or vice versa back and forth. Okay, So either figure out how to do it with your calculator or uh, try to, you know, make sense of uh, the conversions to go back and forth. All right. That's degrees. All right. Next, we're going to talk about how to measure angles using a new type of measurement, using something called a radian. Okay. So before we start measuring angles in radians, first we have to define an angle measuring one radian. We need a base. Okay. The base for a degree is one three hundred sixtieth of a rotation of a circle. Seems kind of weird, uh, but that's the definition of one degree. For radians, we use a circle of any radius. Call it R. Okay. So here's a picture. In the figure, this is a picture whose vertex is at the center, and that is called a central angle. We're always going to pretty much use central angles. Okay. Notice that the central angle intercepts an arc along the circle, and it happens to be, this arc right here, it happens to be the same length as the radius, right? So that arc along the circle measures R units. The radius of the circle is also R. We can see that from that. Okay. The measure of this angle that has arc length the arc the intercepted arc is the same as the radius by definition is one radian okay so again the measure of one radian is the uh, length of the intercepted arc that makes the arc equal to the radius of the circle okay so here we go one radian is the measure of the central angle of a circle that intercepts an arc equal in length to the radius of the circle. And as the circle gets bigger, the radius of that circle gets bigger, the intercepted arc gets bigger, but the angle stays the same because it's a ratio. Okay. So the radian measure of any central angle is the length of the intercepted arc divided by the circle's radius. Just what I said, this is a ratio. So in figure 4-7, the length of the arc intercepted by the angle beta is double the radius. Right, we see that here. One, two. Okay, so that means angle beta is two radians. And we can see that angle gamma right there is three radians. Not quite, uh, not quite really a straight angle there, but it's three radiuses so that it is three angles, okay? So this leads to my definition of a radian, how to calculate a radian. We see we have my arc length there. We see I have my angle that I'm trying to measure there, and I have the radius right there, okay? So theta, any angle, is equal to the arc length divided by the radius. Any angle that I want to measure in radians is the arc length divided by the radius of the circle. So here's our first example. Finally, after all that, oh, well, we did a, the degrees, minutes, second ones, but this is our first official example right here. A central angle theta of a circle of radius six inches intercepts an arc length of 15 inches. What is the radian measure of theta? Well, from my formula, we see that it is S over R. So theta 
is equal to S over R. Arc length divided by the radius. So theta is equal to 15 inches over 6 inches. And the inches over inches cancel. 15 over 6 is 2.5. But the more interesting thing here is that the unit of length that I was using was eliminated. Okay? That's because radians is unitless. Okay? It's a ratio. Right? We can write it, it that means degrees. Okay? So if I want to specify that that this is uh, a radian, I can actually write radian, or radians, okay? But there's no specific symbol uh, for a radian measure. Most of the time we can recognize radians because it's gonna have a funny little symbol in there that we're gonna talk about in a second. But uh, unless you see the degree sign, Never assume that it is degrees. Always assume that if it has nothing, if the measure of an angle has nothing there, no units, that it is a radian. Let's do it one more time. 12 feet. Always And always make sure that these two match. Central angle theta. So theta is equal to S over R. That's 42 over 12. Okay. 42. Let's go. 42 feet over 12 feet, the feet cancel, and we get that this is 3.5. 3.5 what? Just 3.5 or 3.5 radians, write it out. So, how can we obtain a relationship that we can use to go back and forth between degrees and radians? So we compare the number of degrees and the number of radians in one complete rotation around a circle. So we know that it's 360 degrees to go all the way around the circle. And we also know that there is a formula for the intercepted arc that's equal to the whole circle called the circumference. So if I want to use my formula, for finding the radian measure of a whole circle, theta is equal to S over R, like we just said, arc length over radius. The circle circumference, the formula for that is 2 pi R. So we have 2 pi R over R, and we just get 2 pi. So that means that one complete rotation of a circle is 360 degrees and it is also the way we're going to measure it more often 2 pi radians okay and to make this simpler uh, we can just divide both sides by 2 right and we can get this relationship right here that 180 degrees is equal to pi or sorry 180 degrees is equal to pi radians and we can use this ratio right here as our conversion factor to go between the two. So you wanna go from using the basic relationship, right? That is pi radians is equal to 100 degrees, 180 degrees. If you wanna to go to radians, put the radians on the top. If you wanna to go to the degrees, put the degrees on the top. And we use this ratio. Do you have to use this ratio? No, you could use two pi and 360, but this one's easier, right? This one's one pi and 180, keep the number smaller, okay? So these are my two formulas that you'll need to know. Which one do you use? Put the place that you want to go in the numerator in the top. Okay. Now, angles that are fractions of complete rotations. Any one of those factors that we talked about that are factors of 360. Okay. If these are good fractions of a complete rotation, they're usually expressed in multiples of pi. Remember I said that radians usually have a symbol in them? That's it, pi. So rather than saying that something is 1.57 radians, 
that's weird, we are going to use this, that the angle is pi over 2 radians, as opposed to 1.57. Pi over 2, I can visual, visualize that. It's a quarter of a rotation around the circle, right? because all the way around the circle is 2 pi. So pi over 2 would be a quarter of that. So pi over 2 I can visualize, or you, sh you should be able to, and 1.57, that's a little confusing, okay? So when we have fractions, we are going to leave radians in terms of pi and their fraction. Okay, let's do a couple of quick conversions here. Okay, where do you want to go? You want to go to radians. That means radians goes on the top. So we take this and we multiply it by pi over 180 degrees. The degrees cancel out and we're left with 30 pi over 180 and we simply reduce and we get pi over 6 and you can write the word radians uh, and we'll do that for now. 90 multiply by pi over 180 and we get 90 pi over 180 which is pi over 2. All right so 30 degrees that's an angle that I can visualize. Now I have a new way to think about it. 90 degrees again we said the quarter of the way around the circle now we have a new way to visualize it pi over 2 radians. Negative angles, we are now talking about going in this direction, right, from the stand, and all of these are going to start in the standard position, unless we say so, unless we say something different, we're going to start right there on the positive x-axis, and we're either going to go this way, or in this case, for a negative angle, we're going to go that way. So we're going to multiply by pi over 180, and my answer now is going to be a negative and we get 3 pi over 4, okay, radians, I'm not going to put it this time, right, if you don't put the degree, as long as you don't have the degree sign, the degree sign means degrees, if you don't have the degree sign, it means a radian, let's go the other way, that's a radian, how do we get it to be a degree, well, so now we take this, and we multiply by 180 degrees over pi radians. Technically, the radians is unitless, but it still helps to see the word there and cancel it out. Now I have 100, and the pi's cancel out. I have 180 degrees over 3, which just gives me 60 degrees. Now you need the degree symbol. You can't just leave it blank. There's no choice here. You must put the degree symbol. Okay. And multiply by 180 degrees over pi. Radians cancel. The pi's. The pi is not the radian. The radi radians is unitless. It can cancel with anything. It just go away if you wanted to. Okay. The pi is a hint that you have a radian, and now we just divide, and we get 300 degrees, negative 300 degrees, don't forget that negative sign, and you can still do this even though one radian doesn't have a pi on it, okay, so we still take 180 degrees over pi radians, Radians cancel, again, it's unitless. Now all I have to do is actually use pi, 3.14. Divide it, and you get about 57.3 degrees. So radians, one radian, weird number. And it looked weird when we looked at it on the circle. It looked like it wasn't quite... Uh, to any one of the quadrants, it was just hanging out there, all right, but it does work when we're talking about a whole circle, okay, when we're talking about that it goes all the way around is 2 pi. Let's draw some angles, okay, so 
Here's the trick. You could convert radians back to degrees to help you draw the angle. We don't want to do that. We want to try to start to think in radians. Try not to make the conversion. Try to imagine where, or try to realize what angle is going where and what pi over two radians actually means. Okay, this will help immensely as we start to go into other things, especially graphing uh, trigonometric functions. So you have to be comfortable with radian measure. Okay, and we're going to always start this by considering angles in standard position. So each vertex is at the origin, each initial side lies on the positive x-axis, and each terminal side is how much of a rotation you're going around the origin, right? So you're starting here and you're spinning around a certain number of times, right? And then here's your ray that you're gonna finish up. Okay. And when we think in radians, this determines how much of a complete rotation or how many full rotations are going to give you that angle whose thing you're trying to draw okay and try not to go to degrees try not to say okay it's 700 or two two full rotations around the circle okay that's four pi now i have to go back to degrees okay that's 720 degrees now okay now i can think about what that means we want to just be able to think in radians and draw these things with radians so a good way to start is the four quadrantal angles okay in the first one one full revolution from the blue all the way around is two pi and we, we talked about that okay from here down to this quadrant line right and remember we're going in a positive direction when we spin counterclockwise is three pi over two radians three quarters of a revolution, three pi over two. Half my rev revolution is pi, and that is my conversion factor, okay? Pi radians is half a rotation around the circle. Again, that is 180 degrees, but we're gonna try not to think of it that way. We're gonna try to think of it just as pi radians. And a quarter of a rotation is pi over two. Okay? And remember, we're measuring from here to the terminal side of this angle. So let's try some pi over four. Well, if I think about pi over four, it's a positive angle. So I know I'm gonna spin this way, okay? If pi over two is a full circle, okay? This would be an eighth of the way around the circle. So if the whole circle is two pi, pi over four would be like that. So that is theta. Again, maybe to start, you actually have to do this. Multiply by 180 over pi. Pi is cancel. 180 divided by 4 is 45 degrees. Might be more comfortable for now saying, okay, I can visualize what 45 degree is. It's, it's a halfway between 0 and 90. Again, that's fine but we want to start to get away from that and be able to visualize these things without doing it, okay? Well, if there's a couple ways I can think about five pi over four. I can say, okay, it's five eighths of the way around the circle, but you might not see that. You might say that it's, okay, it's pi over four plus another pi. So if I'm pi over four, if I'm right there, Another pi would be halfway around the circle, so this would be my angle right there. As a last resort, multiply by 180 degrees over pi, and we get uh, this would be 45. 45 times 5 would be 225. So you can say, okay, 180 is to here, and then another 45 down to there. Try not to do that. We're gonna try to visualize these things as spins with radians. Negative three pi over four? Well, now I know I'm going this way, okay? Uh, so pi would be all the way around, three pi over four would be to there. So that would be a negative, 
if you have to, again, uh, that it would be a negative 135 degrees. Okay. Better to do it as one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. Finally, nine quarters. This one's tricky, okay? Because all the way around the circle is two pi. This is more than that, okay? So that means that here's my angle, but that wouldn't be right because that's only pi over four. This is my angle. So we go all the way around once plus a little bit more, okay? To draw this angle as nine pi over four, okay? Now, here are some common angles. So this, these pictures, both positive and negative, illustrate the degree and radian measures of angles that you will commonly see in trigonometry. And guess what? These angles come from stuff you did in geometry. Because look at them. There was something in geometry that dealt with 30 degrees and 60 degrees. It is a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And look at the other one, 45, because of the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So all of these angles around this circle, the most common angles that we're gonna see in trigonometry, all have to do with triangles, all have to do with multiples of 30 uh, and multiples of 45 degree angles because those are the most interesting ones. Those are the ones that we are most common and do the most things and actually break up the circle kind of nicely. Um, we'll stick with positive rotations, negative rotations. They just go backwards, right? So it's 30, uh, 30, 45, then 60, just go in the different directions. Okay. Let's try to make one. Okay. So if I'm going to make these angle measurements, this is going to be zero. Okay. We can start with the first angle, which is 30 degrees. And when I convert that to radians, if you didn't notice it from the last page, multiply by pi over 180. And we get that that is pi over 6. Let's skip this one for now. The next one is, if we go another 30 degrees, if we get another pi over six, that's two pi over six, right? If this distance is pi over six, then this distance gives me another pi over six. So that's two pi over six, which reduces to pi over three. That is three pi over six, which is, that's four pi over six, which reduces to two pi over three. That's five pi over six, and finally six pi over six, which is pi. Okay, we can keep going. Seven pi over six, eight pi over six reduces to four over three. Nine pi over six reduces to three over two. Uh, 10 reduces to five pi over three and 11 pi over six does not reduce. So you see, as we went around this, if we count every pi over six, right? If we count every 30 degrees and write down the radian measure of that angle, we get a nice little pattern here. Uh, notice also that pi over sixes are across from each other and above each other. The pi over threes are across from each other and above each other, and pi over twos as well, okay? <laughs> Let's do the ones that we're missing. We said that that was 45 degrees, which was pi over four. Hey, look at that, that's another 45 degrees. This is 90 degree angle, pi over four. Two pi over four reduces pi over two. Three pi over four for this one. Four pi over four for pi. 5 pi over 4, 
6 and 7 pi over 4. We have just labeled the most important, the 16 most important angles on this circle, on a rotation about this circle. Uh, and as we throw some coordinates in here in later second sections, you realize that this is the beginnings of making something called a unit circle. Okay. And again, all of these angles, right? If the terminal side is twelfth, a twelfth of a rotation, we get pi over six, right? This was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. So we can split these. This is why 360 works so well. This is why the radians work so well. Because we can split these circles into equal pieces of either one of these ratios. Okay. So we have pi over 6, pi over 4 for 45 degrees, pi over 3 for 60, pi over 2 for 90, and so on as we go around here. 2 pi over 3 for 120, pi for 180, 4 pi over 3, 3 pi over 2, whoops. Uh, 7 pi over 4 and 2 pi. And all the ones that are not listed on here that are other pieces of a rotation as we spin around. Okay. So, two angles with the same initial and terminal sides, but different rotations are called coterminal angles. And every angle has infinitely many coterminal angles because you can spin around a circle as many times as you want in standard position, right? This angle, once, twice, you know, or once all the way around. This is not all the way around, then once all the way around, then twice all the way around. You get the idea. So if the rotation is of an angle is extended by one or more complete rotations, either 360 or 2 pi, either clockwise or counterclockwise, the result is an angle with the same initial and terminal size as my original angle. And that's the definition of coterminal angles. So we can do this with degrees by adding or subtracting 360 degrees times any number, right? You can do it once, twice, three times, however many you want. Or we can add or subtract 2 pi times k, any number I want, in order to find angles with the same starting point and the same ending point. Now, usually the goal is to get a positive angle in between zero and 360, a positive angle in between zero and two pi. This will help us later, okay? So you can add 360 to theta and subtract 360 from theta, however you wanna do it. Assume the following angles are in standard position, find a positive angle less than 360 that is coterminal with this angle. So if I will start at 420, all I have to do is subtract 360 degrees and I get 60. So 420 would look like this. Once around the whole circle and then a little bit more. 60 would just be this one, okay? They both start here at the positive x-axis. They both finish here. One has more of a rotation than the other one, but they are coterminal. They finish in the same spot. Okay. And negative 120, I could subtract 360, but I want to get a positive angle that is coterminal. So just add. And we get 240 degrees. Again, negative 120 would have let look like mm, negative 120 would have looked like this, right? So negative 120 degrees, this negative direction, 90, not quite 180, so in between there somewhere, but a positive 240 looks like that. So it still starts and stops at the same ray, okay? and we're starting there. It still starts and stops at the same spot, but different directions. And we can do this the same way, except 2 pi with fractions, which is fine. Okay, so 17 pi over 6, I ask myself, is that 
bigger than 2 pi or smaller than 2 pi, where is that? Well, 12 over 6 is 2. So 17 pi over 6 is bigger than 2 pi. So let's subtract out 2 pi, which is 12 pi over 6, which gives me 5 pi over 6. Okay. So that is an angle that is not quite pi. Looks kind of like that. And 17 pi over 6 would just be twice around. A negative pi over 12? Well, that's a negative angle, so I'm just going to add 2 pi to it. And 2 pi is 24 pi over 12, which gives me 23 pi over 12. So not one of my normal angles, not one of my standard angles. It doesn't matter, though, because I still know it's almost 2 pi. It's going to be kind of like this. And the negative pi over 12 is just going to be down a little bit. Okay. So even though that's not one of my, like, the angles that I'm familiar with, I can still visualize about where it is. And we can do all this again without having to go to degrees first, right? So we want to stay a little bit away from that. Okay. Uh, if it's more than 360 or 2 pi, I might have to do this twice. So a 750 degree angle, if I subtract 360 degrees from that, I'm not going to quite get... Uh, I get 390, all right, so I just got to do it again. Subtract 360 again, and I get a 30-degree angle, okay? Might have to do it more than once. So 22 pi over 3, if I subtract 2 pi, which is 22 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, we get... 16 pi over 3. That's not going to do it. Subtract 2 pi again. That's 10 pi over 3. That's still bigger than 2 pi. That's not. Okay? So we just keep subtracting. You just keep subtracting and subtracting until you get a positive code term right what we're trying to find we're trying to find a positive code terminal angle in between 0 and 2 pi okay so if it's if it's negative oops if the angle is negative we can do the same thing only keep adding so we're going to add 2 pi so that's negative 17 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6 uh, not going to work, right? So this would be negative 5 pi over 6. So we just add another 2 pi to this, and we get 7 pi over 6. Okay? So these are co-terminal angles. Angles that start and stop in the same spot, and we always want this one because we want to deal with, we're going to go even further than this, into something called uh, reference angles. Uh, but the idea here is to start start by getting the angle positive. All right, let's finish with some, some measurements here, okay? So we can use this formula that theta is equal to the the radian measure formula, theta is equal to arc length divided by the radius to find the length of the arc of any circle. How do you do this? Remember, S represents the length of the arc intercepted by the central angle. And so if we want to solve the formula for S, it's very simple, right? Just multiply both sides by the radius. And we get this formula. That arc length is equal to the radius times the angle. However, this, for this formula to work, this angle 
must be in radians, never degrees. It doesn't work. So if we have a problem like this, where we have a radius and an angle, this angle is no good. You need to change it to radians before attempting the problem. So we take 120 degrees, multiply it by pi over 180, and we get 2 pi over 3 radians. So now we know arc length is equal to the radius times the angle. And the reason why I have to do this, you know, let's just go down, is now we have 10 inches times this ratio, which has no units, which makes my answer going to be in inches. Okay, So uh, that turns into 20 pi over 3. Calculate that out. Take 20 times pi. Use as many decimals as over pi. Use your calculator. And we get about 20.9. Okay, this is the trick. You need to change the angle from degrees to radians. Okay. Finally, again, this is the last few problems here. Uh, we can measure linear and angular speed. Okay, so imagine this. Uh, carousel, like at the like at the carnival, like at the the uh, zoo, uh, contains four circular rows of animals. As it revolves, the animals on the outside travel a further distance than those in the inside. Right, this circle is smaller than this circle. So if I'm sitting here, I'm going to go around, and if I'm sitting here, I'm going to go all the way around that way. Okay. So that means that these animals have a greater linear speed. You're covering a further distance in the same amount of time. But they have the same number of revolutions, right? If I go around once here, I'm still going to go around once there. I traveled further in a line, but I still traveled all the way around the circle once. Okay. So this is two measurements of speed. Linear speed. We use a V, and angular speed, we use a W called omega. And we define these with these two formulas. That linear speed is equal to arc length over time. Very simple. And uh, arc length is given by the radius times theta, and the angular speed is omega is angle divided by time. So this is the length you're going by the time. This is the angle you're going by the time, linear speed, angular speed. Okay, And we already have a way to figure out arc length uh, with this formula right there. Okay, So most of the time, this is just a matter of conversions. For example, Hard drive, computers, oh, unless you have an SSD, unless you have solid state, uh, most computers have a drive that rotates in something like this. 3,600 revolutions per minute. Angle divided by time. This is angular speed expressed in revolutions per minute. We can also use conversion factors to change this to whatever it is you want. The conversion factor to go to radians is that there are two pi radians and one revolution. Now that's something we previously talked about. And again, revolution is kind of like a unit. Um, and in this case, we're going to try to uh, cancel that out with, uh, with the radians, uh, with this conversion. So if you wanted to turn 3,600 revolutions per one minute, we already have, this is already our angular speed. We don't have to do anything. We just convert 3,600 revolutions in one minute, two pi radians in one revolution, revolutions cancel. And now we have radians per minute. Radians on the top, 
minutes on the bottom. Okay. So you can establish a relationship between the two kinds of speeds by just putting the two formulas together. We know that S is equal to R times theta, okay, divided by time, and now we can go between linear speed and angular speed, okay. And there's my formula. So the linear speed, V, of a point distance R from the center of rotation is given by that, or that this is theta over time, right? So it's R theta over time. Just convert it for W, right, for omega. The omega is the angular speed, and it's in radians per something, per unit of time, minutes, seconds, whatever. So the way we're going to use that is with a problem like this. So a wind machine uses used to generate electricity has blades that are 10 feet. That's my radius. Okay. The propeller is rate is rotating at four revolutions per second. Find the speed in feet per second. Okay. So let's set this up. And it's very simple. I want linear speed. Okay. So all I have to do to get linear speed is take the radius times the angular speed. The radius is 10 feet. Times the angular speed is revolutions per second. So four revolutions in one second. I don't want that. I want feet per second. I don't want feet revolutions per second. So I got to get rid of this revolutions. So I do that by saying that there are two pi radians in one revolution. Radians are unitless, so I don't need to worry about that. I now have feet over seconds. So I have 10 times 4 times 2 pi divided by 1. Multiplying that all together, you get 80 pi feet per 1 second. And then I should uh, multiply this out, and I get about 251.2. Two feet per second. Okay, makes more sense than 80 pi feet. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Okay, so basically all I did was I used a very simple formula here to follow through on the conversions, right? So to turn angular speed revolutions per second to a linear speed to see how fast something is going. We can have one more of those. Uh, this is good. I wanted to do this one. This is more, uh, could do, this, this question is more about what you would normally see. So if you want to try it on your own, here's the multiple choice questions right here. And this will be the last question that we do. So if you want to try it, you can pause it and give this a shot. All right. So the way we do this is sneaky. 45 inches. How fast will the pickup truck be moving when the wheels are are rotating at, there's my angular speed. I want miles per hour. Okay, so my formula is that angular uh, speed is equal to uh, the radius times omega. So we have the radius the radius, so the radius is 45 divided by 2 uh, inches, so that is 22.5 inches times, here's my angular speed, 390 revolutions in one minute, okay? I don't want any of those. 
I don't, normal people don't want to know how many inches per minute you go in a car. We want to know miles per hour. Okay, so first let's get rid of revolutions. There are two pi radians in one revolution. Those cancel. Um, let's do inches first. There are 12, everybody should know this, that there are 12 inches in one foot. Okay, so what do I want to get rid of? I want to get rid of inches, which is on the top, so I put it on the bottom. Now, this conversion you might not be so familiar with, but it should be some something you kind of know, that there are 5,280 feet in one mile. Okay, so inches canceled. Now I want to cancel foot. So 5,280 feet in one mile. So now feet cancel. And I'm done with my, I have the unit that I want on the top. Minutes at the bottom. I don't want that. I want hours. So there are 60 minutes in one hour. Minutes cancel. And now all I have to do to get my answer is to multiply across the top, divide out the bottom, these two numbers. Don't forget the pi. And we have 22.5 times 390 times 2 times pi times 60 equals a really big number, 3 million. Divide out the 12, divide out 5,280. And I get 52.2 miles per hour. Okay. Long section, I know, a uh, lot to cover in this. Uh, that was 4.1 angles and radian measure.